Well, Mark, in your uh, long coaching career, this was uh, a pretty important stop. Uh, even though you've been in the league an awful long time, is it still kind of a weird feeling coming back to places like this? Yeah, it really is. It's nice. It brings back um, an awful lot of good memories. But, uh, you know, that was uh, quite a while ago. Um, you know, anytime you win the Stanley Cup, um, it's so hard to win. And, uh, you know, you, you, your thoughts go back to the great players. You know, you know, all the time when I come back here, I, I, I think of Patrick Waugh, I think of Joe Sackick, I think of Peter Forsberg, Adam Foote, and uh, Kaminsky. Uh, you keep going on down the list. It was a really talented club. And at the end of the day, uh, it is players that make such a huge, huge difference. You know, when, you're, when you're in a playoff series, um, you're going to need a game-breaking goal, and Joe Sackick provided those. Uh, for us. He scored 18 that playoff. He only scored one in the finals. Otherwise, you know, he would have tied the record of, uh, of um, Reggie Leach, who had 19. And I, I can remember thinking, geez, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He scored so often. But he only scored one in the finals. It was a very important one. He scored the winner in game three. Uh, and uh, there were so many times where he, he did that for us. We had... Uh, just outstanding goaltending. So, you know, you got to win some games where your goalie just stands on his head. And Patrick did that, um, especially in the, in the Detroit series. The Detroit series, when we were up against a team that had over 130 points, and that was before you had the extra point. Uh, this is, that was a team that was, they were absolutely magnificent. And, you know, to, going into it, I wasn't quite sure we could beat them, but Patrick was. And I thought he was the guy that uh, that really influenced the rest of our team into believing that they could win. Uh, we had you know great character guys along the way too. Uh, Mike Keane was very important because his leadership and the fact that he'd been there before. So uh, again, you you think back to the players, you think back to the people that you worked with, and just how important everybody's contribution was. You know, players will talk about early in their careers if you get chance. Um, as a player, you never know when you're getting another chance. Is it the same as a coach? I mean, fairly young in your coaching, NHL coaching career? Yeah, you know, the one phrase that I always hate is they can never take that away from you. You know, it's almost like, oh, boy, geez, were you ever lucky? <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we all strive in this business to to get to the postseason. It's, it's not easy to get to the postseason. I, I know I, in the last five years in the NHL, I, I never made it. Uh, once, so you know this this fight for us right now is so important, and every every win is important. Every point that we can get, every game that we can get, uh, the focus to to do your job on a daily basis is one of the strengths of this team. I think uh, you know Guy's done a really good job of preparing the players so that they know what they're going to expect each and every game. And our players, you got to give them credit. They've uh, gone out and. Well, we haven't been letter perfect every night. We've followed uh, instructions and we've found ways. And, and much like you know, what we spoke about earlier with that championship Colorado Avalanche team, you need different people to step up on different nights. Sometimes it's going to be your game-breaking people, like Eric Carlson for us last night. And some nights it's just going to be a workmanlike work of you know, your third and your fourth line and the Kellys and the Wingles and, and uh, the Stahlbergs and, and uh, you know, the Pajots, they're going to have to grind it out uh, for you along with, uh, you know, all the defense, uh, with all the shots they're blocking and all the things that they're doing that are right and that are helping us to win. Players oftentimes <clears throat> have a hard time being able to give you a retrospective when they get to one of those demarcation points, when they get to a thousand games while they're still playing. Mm -hmm. After they retire, they can. I've talked to retired coaches who say, you know, when you talk about a city, that they they have a they have a look back on it. As a coach who still has a lot of years left of coaching, do you? Do you st can you do that while you're still coaching? Can you look back, for example, as a coach and be able to see how the game has changed since you were coaching here to what it is now? Or is that something that you can't really do until you're retired, until you start looking back? No, you can, you, you can notice the differences in the way the game is played. Um, I will say the similarities are that we were a, a very good defensive club that people didn't give us enough credit for how good defensively uh, we were. So defense really does win. It's nice to have defense 
that can quickly turn into offense. And uh, again, I think that's a large part of where the NHL is now. Uh, you need to be able to strike quickly when you get your opportunity. So it's a quick strike uh, offense. It's not a trade rushes uh, type of game the way maybe it was when I started uh, coaching. You know, rush chances were everything. How many you got and how many you gave up were very um, indicative of how the game was was going to go. I, I think coverage um, is, is much more complete now. Uh, I think players have been coached, you know, even down in, in minor hockey levels, uh, to have a general understanding of, uh, of how they're supposed to play in the defensive zone. I mean, you can look on YouTube, you can look on the internet and, and come up with five or six really good sites that uh, will show you point by point how you're supposed to play specific positions. So I think you're getting a much more intelligent athlete. Um, and the league is, is, is faster now because there isn't as much clutching and grabbing. Maybe conditioning has changed a, a, a touch for the better, but it has in every era. Uh, but I think the, the big change is that you know you used to have to fight your way through to get chances. Uh, people would get a hold of you and that was just, you know, now we complain about it. Uh, then it was just, hey, you know, just, just fight your way through it. And uh, uh, you had to be bigger and stronger and a little bit more massively built uh, to be effective over the long term. And that team 20 years ago, you Probably didn't have a player like Eric Carlson. No. We had with Sandus Olzelich, who was offensively like Eric, but defensively didn't compare to him at all. Like Eric, you know, as much as he, he loves to play the game on an offensive slant, it doesn't his read is is really terrific. Like he has got a great read of the game. Um, he breaks up so many plays subtly. Uh, just by positioning himself uh, in the right area. And a lot of times, because he reads the play and he positions himself, uh, the opponents go to a different direction. And so he steers things uh, the right way. And uh, again, I'm, uh, when I was watching tape of, of Eric over the summer, uh, it was so interesting to see how many good defensive plays that he was making. Because, you know, I heard like a lot of people, he's, he was a little more of an offensive uh, player than a defensive, but he's equally as good, I think. He's a superstar defensively as well as he is a superstar offensively, and uh, he's been magnificent for us uh, this year. You know, he's been complimented by the fact that I think his partner really gives him comfort, and uh, Meth uh, is comfortable playing with him. He understands him really well. Uh, he's got a good... Uh, um, uh, he's got a good brain for the game as well, and you know we're we're a, a group on defense that has blossomed. Uh, you know, with the with the uh, emergence of uh, Borvietsky and uh, Weidman played really well. Cody Cece has been terrific. He's had a lot of tough challenges on a lot of nights, and Dion has been really resurgent for us. His offensive game has come back. I think his shot is a little bit better this year than maybe it was last year. And offensively, the power play uh, with him and Eric on it uh, is, is becoming very good. I mean, the last, what, 20, 30 games, we're one of the better power plays in the league. And uh, those two guys have had a lot to do with it.